Okay, in this video I'd like to show you how I attach crimp-on connectors to a cable like RG223. RG223 is a high-end cable similar in size to RG58. The big difference between them is the conductors are copper, solid copper, and they're coated with silver. So we've got two braids, both silver coated, the center conductor, the solid copper, it's also coated with silver. So this cable here will provide a lot of shielding effectiveness, more so than a standard RG58. For most applications, it won't make much of a difference, but if you're in an environment where there happens to be a lot of noise, a lot of RFI, EMI issues, things like that, and you're worried about cross-coupling between cables that are close to each other, then uh, consider using a cable like RG223. So let me show you where, where I start. We've got both ends in this case. They've been freshly cut off. This is the connector we're going to be using. It's uh, made by Amphenol and uh, I urge you not to spend your money and waste your money on inexpensive connectors. Um, all connectors pretty much nowadays come from either Mexico or Asia, some from the Philippines, Malaysia area. Even connectors like Amphenol, like this uh, end connector, very, very high quality. As you can see here, this one is made in China as well. So even top, top quality uh, connectors like Amphenol. Everything is made uh, in Asia or outside of the, the USA. So the nice thing about this cable is you can use it for B and C connectors. They make SMA connectors specifically for RG223. And as pointed out, end connectors like this here specifically for RG223. Even though physically it's very, very close in size to RG58, which is also a 50 ohm coax, don't get connectors for RG58 and expect it to work with this coax here. The double shielded braid here will not uh, allow a connector made for RG58 to, to fit properly. Specifically, the crimp ferrule will not slide over when you attach the coax inside here, the dielectric inside center conductor and the braid goes over the outside. If you try to uh, slide this crimp ferrule over it, and if this were an RG58 connector, you would not be able to do so without damaging most of the shields and the braid on the outside here. So make sure you get a connector that's made for RG223. So the first thing we do is we gotta prepare the ends. We take off the outer jackets, things like that. What I do is I purchased about a dozen of these. I found these on the internet. They come from, from China. I found them for about a dollar or seventy-five delivered, so you can't beat it for the price. They come with two very, very sharp razor blades inside here and they can be adjusted for their depth. Here, they provide a hex key. I like to actually remove one of the razor blades and I only keep one inside here. So I always keep a pair of them for one particular type of coax. And that gives me greater control. It allows me to define exactly where each of the cuts will be. Because some connectors need the separation between the cuts to be different than what it may be set for on the tool here. So I like making one cut per device and since they're so inexpensive uh, there's absolutely no reason not to do that. So the first thing is, is I like to use heat shrink tubing. This is adhesive lined heat shrink. This is three to one shrink factor. This heat shrink is actually too big for a cable like this. It'll actually shrink just over this and it'll work. But since I ran out of half inch heat shrink, I'm, I'm forced to use this three quarter inch. It'll work, 
but it's actually kind of wasteful. Um, it doesn't need to be this big. Nice thing about three quarter inch heat shrink is here, for example, I attached some on the Sanfinol end connector. And the nice thing about a three to one shrink factor is you can see it'll fit over very, very large parts of the connector body and still shrink down properly over even a small coax like 223 here. And with the adhesive on the inside, basically hot glue, it makes for an awesome strain relief. So the three quarter inch works out good. And even for connectors like SMA, this is the three quarter inch. Again, half inch would have worked even better, but since I'm out of it, I use three quarter inch, but even that works fine. So always get in the habit of sliding over the heat shrink first, just in case you've got a connector on the other end. The next step is sliding over the crimp ferrule. Now here's a very important tip for you. And this is one of the reasons I'm making the video. This ferrule, when it, when you slide it over the end of the, the coax like that, there's absolutely no problem. When we prepare this end, and the braid is actually over this end here, when we try to slide this ferrule over the braid, it's still going to be a pretty tight fit, even though this connector was made for this coax. It's, it's a pretty tight fit. So what I do is you take your utility knife and it's very very easy just as I'm doing here I hold it at about a 45 degree angle and I put a bevel on the inside. I know you can't see in this video but I'm actually just making a very very slight bevel. I'm actually shaving off the inside So there we go. We've now got a very nice bevel here. That bevel will prevent uh, the edge, the sharp edge that would normally be on the inside from digging into the braids here. So just make sure you remember to put the right end on. Now, next step, I've got one marked here. This one is made for RG223, and this one is made for just a black jacket. We don't want that. This one here, black jacket off and the braid off. That's the one we want to use. So, you open it up, you insert it so that it's just over the edge a little bit like that, maybe about an eighth of an inch, and you give it a good number of turns like that. You'll see that it made a cut in here, and at this point, you can just put your, put your nail in there, and you pull out absolutely perfect did not nick the dielectric at all and yet it removed the outer jacket and both layers of the the shield next step is we remove the black outer jacket again we opened it up what we're going to do is we're going to take this black edge here and we're just going to line it up uh, to the outside edge here there's a little um, a little bit of plastic holder here that sticks out a little bit about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I pretty much I just line that up like this so you can see that it's just over an eighth inch, probably about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I hope that's coming out okay on the camera. I actually can't see the camera. So we give it a couple of turns like that. And we go ahead and we've got a small cut now in here. I could have used the utility knife actually cut around like this but normally more times than not I'll find that I end up stopping not where I started and things are off a little bit so let's go ahead and make a, a small incision once you make the incision you can just peel that right off and you're good to go so now we're almost done what you can do is just peel back a little bit of this braid. You can see how nice and shiny the silver conductors are. And that's what makes this cable so special. It's got two braids and all the conductors are silver coated. So what we want to do is simply come over here. We're going to cut, make a cut about an eighth of an inch. 
of the dielectric and that peels off very very nicely off the, the center conductor. So now at this point we cut that to length and you can see the center pin slides right over and it just touches the dielectric and that's exactly where we want it. You don't want it sticking out too far and you don't want to make it too short where it's not going in too much. You can see that there's a small weep hole in here. They actually intended you to solder this uh, center pin to the center conductor. I've been able to actually do that only a few times. More times than not I'll get a whole bunch of solder on the outside here and then that, you end up having to scrape it very very carefully get that solder off there. It's a tremendous pain in the butt. So that's the reason I thought I would start crimping even the center pins and I thought I'd give it a try and I actually liked it very much. This is the crimping tool we're, we'll be using. Nothing fancy. We got it off of eBay for about 30 bucks. Each connector is going to require a different size die. So you got to figure out which one is the correct size. For this particular BNC connector, this one here, and this center pin, turns out the correct size is the second one here, and that's .068 inches. Now, you can see here, there's just a very, very small die area, and the rest of it behind here is totally open. So what you want to do is you just want to line up the die area just above the small rise on the very, very tail end of this center pin. Basically, you want to put the die area between that rise and that weep hole. So basically, we're going to be crimping the lower half of that center pin. So we just line it up like that. We give it a good crimp, and we're done. This crimp now is extremely secure. There's absolutely no wobble. It makes an excellent electrical and mechanical connection. It will not come off. It does every bit as good as uh, soldering. Next step, we slide this over very carefully. We put the dielectric inside. We make sure that all the braid is on the outside. And we keep an eye on the center pin to make sure that we have not gone too far out or that it's too far in. So we slowly push it in starting to come up and right there there was a small snap and that's because that center pin is called captivated and it will not move. It's snapped into place and you can see it's right on the end where it should be. So that center pin is captivated. It's a captive center pin. I take my fingernail and I just run the braid all the way up and you can see it makes it right to the end where it should be. So this is where the tricky part is, is we slide the crimp ferrule over, over the braid. And again, this is where it helps to, you can see that if this were a ferrule made for RG58, there's no way that that would have fit. So what I do, in a case like this, it's still giving me a little bit of resistance fingers are just not strong enough to push that ferrule onto that double braid. What I do, a little trick that I found, is I pick a size on the die here that definitely will not crimp down on the coax. It's more than big enough. And that happens to be this last one, like 0.255. I put the coax over it, and you can see it freely moves around. But guess what? The nice thing about it is it smacks that ferrule. So what I do is I just lay this down like this okay so just after a few wraps you can see the ferrule has made it all the way up to the top and this is still moving freely. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now we're ready to crimp the ferrule itself. So for this BNC connector the size that we actually want is the .213 that's the second one here. So we turned it over and you can see 
in the die here, this is the actual die area we're going to be using. And this back part over here is actually slightly larger diameter. It's been gr ground out or milled out slightly bigger, so it won't crimp down as hard. So that part we keep toward the end. And what we do, we take our coax and our ferrule, and we make sure that the top here is just ever so slightly, like about a, a millimeter below the very, very edge here. So we just go ahead and line it up. We're about a millimeter below it. And we give it a good crimp. And there we go. You can see it's made a perfect crimp. This connector will not come off. If you wanted to, you could take your sharp edge there and get rid of this braid. Believe it or not, what I like to do is just fold whatever small braids may be left over. Absolutely will not hurt things. If anything, it might help things because the braid is, the shield is making more contact with this ferrule, with the shield. I just fold it back on itself like that. I bring up the heat shrink like that. And we hit it with a hot air gun. We move it around so that we're not heating up any one particular area. The air that's coming out of the end here is many, many hundreds of degrees and you could actually damage the coax or the dielectric if you left it on too much in one area. So there we go. Looks like the heat shrink has been completely contracted. And one final step that I like to do while it's good and hot you can see the heat shrink has pulled back a little bit. I get a slightly dampened rag and I just push up ever so slightly. And you can see how that pushed up the heat shrink up on the end like that. Now that does two things for us. Not only does it cool off the heat shrink, now it's perfectly cool to touch, but it actually pushed it up all the way. And as a final check, there it is. And again, a good quality BNC, I'm actually having to apply a little bit of force to turn this. That means that there's really good spring contact between this and the ground portion back here. A lot of cheap BNC connectors, if you buy them, if they spin freely and are wobbly, throw it away. Don't even use it. Check out my video. I made a video about a year ago where I show the effects of cheap connectors happen to come from China. Uh, but like I said, most of every, everything does nowadays. But it shows you what a cheap BNC connector looks like on a, on a Spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator. It'll show you what a bad connection actually looks like. These by Amphenol are very, very tight. There's no wobble whatsoever. And like I said, I've got to apply quite a bit of force here to, to turn this. And when you put this BNC on, it actually should snap into place, which these will. So spend a few extra dollars for a good quality connector and you'll make yourself a jumper that will last you many, many years. And you can make them exactly the length that you need using exactly the coax that you want. So, hope this has been helpful. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to leave them below. Thank you very much.